What's up everyone, Pritch here, and for the first time in what feels like a really long time, I have some really good news to share with you guys about New World. Um, the devs have posted basically an update to the end game update, <laughs> where, uh, and I think this might be the first time ever, they are listening to player feedback and going to adjust and make some changes to the upcoming patches that frankly are just good changes that are just going to help the player base and not hurt the player base. Um, so without further ado, let's dive right into the post. Uh, this is by Zinn. And basically, this is an update to the end game update. <laughs> Thank you all for your continued feedback on the expertise in Gypsum system. Whenever possible, we want to share upcoming changes and discuss them with you so we can build a better game together. Your feedback on this system has greatly improved the direction, so thank you again. Before diving in, I want to be clear that we are dedicated to not reducing the power of players in the world, other than cases addressing bugs and imbalanced problems. The rest of this post details how we are achieving that while retaining the benefits of the expertise and gypsum system. The big change. In early 2022, when we start reducing the effectiveness of your gear to your expertise level, we will exempt the following items. Any item that you yourself have crafted, any item you earn from a quest, any item you purchase from the faction shop. When these changes are implemented, gear score will gear score scaling will only apply to items sold or traded after the patch. So any items obtained prior to this patch will not be impacted or reduced in any way. When we thought about it more, reducing power for existing players is just unacceptable and something we will not do. I need to. I know it's in the middle of the paragraph. I need to pause right there and just say, I, this statement could not be more true. Could not be more true. And I'm really happy that it sounds like that's coming through to you guys at Amazon. Because a very quick way to kill your player base is take what they already have and nerf it to the ground or or ruin something that people have already grinded for. And that was everyone's biggest you know, fear and concern when you, uh, when you posted this end game update in the first place was like all the gypsum stuff and everything sounded great, but the concept of, um, the concept of just taking the gear everyone he already has and downgrading it, um, that, that was the part that most people got the most upset about. There, there are some other aspects and I know you guys are going to hit on them later on, so I won't get into it, but I just want to say reducing the power of existing players is unacceptable and something we will not do. That makes me very happy to hear just as, as a member of this player base. That, thank you. We initially, thought, uh, we initially thought it being only temporary and giving a new path with to gain back that power with gypsum would be acceptable. But it is clear now that we were wrong. <laughs> Uh, for those that don't follow along on maybe like the Reddit or forum posts or social media or anything like that, um, it, it, people were very vocal about how upset they were about uh, this particular change. Um, the change that we're referencing and talking about is uh, they are going to make it early 2022 um, where your expertise level on an item or a slot, I should say, is going to essentially be your effective um, gear score for that weapon. So for example, if I have a 590 spear that I've bought off the trading post, but my expertise for spear is only at 510, originally what they were going to say is in 2022, my, when I use that 590 spear, it's only going to be 510 for me. Um, so that's what we're talking about when it comes to all this, uh, all this fun stuff and, and when, when they're discussing these things. That's the specific change we're talking about right now. Um, when's the last time you, you heard devs just say, guys, we were wrong? Like, like literally this just, I mean, like the funny thing is like they announced it and then they got so much hate for it 
that they're like, wait, maybe we actually don't want to actively kill our player base. And they're like, you know what? Let's change it. Um, I, again, guys, I, like this entire YouTube video is basically going to be me reading things that are good and healthy for the game. So I, I'm legitimately excited and happy about this. Uh, it, more so just the, the concept that they're listening to their player base and it's and like this, this literally seems like the first time in a really long time that Amazon was like on this road to like killing the player base as quickly and efficiently as possible. And then like, wait, what if we don't? what if we help and they like just did a u-turn kind of thing that's what it sort of feels like this updated system will also give players alternative ways to equip themselves if they don't want to engage in the expertise system crafting especially will gain even more importance in new world since any item you craft will be usable at that gear score regardless of expertise Quest and faction shop items will uh, will be alternatives to good gear, and both are things we can uh, continue to introduce more of in the future. Um, so let's let's hit the uh, the quest aspect of this first real fast because it's simple um when you get your weapons to level 20 you unlock the ability to go get your weapon quest um that's going to eventually wind up leading you all across the turn in elite zones killing a bunch of things and eventually you're going to get a F gear score 580 weapon that has corrupted bane on it those are fantastic for invasions um and people's huge concern early on when, when this was first announced was so I'm going to go grind for a 580 weapon all across the Turtum that's going to wind up having a gear score of 520. Like, does that really seem okay? Uh, and basically they're saying, you know what, that was dumb. Uh, we're going to not do that. So uh, any weapon that you get from any quest, uh, you're going to be fine. It's going to be the gear score that it says. It's not going to go down to your expertise level. Next, let's talk about crafting. Um, because currently, I think the best and easiest way to grind your watermark or do end game content is you hit level 60, you go to the training post, you buy a bunch of 580, 590 weapons for somewhere between like 500 to 700 with like decent rolls on them. Um, at least that's what it's been like on my server. Um, and they are basically saying, here's the deal guys. We don't like that. We want you to grind watermark. So the weapons and stuff that get crafted and then put on the trading post are still going to get nerfed. Those will be the things that are still going to get nerfed down to your expertise level. However, if you yourself craft them and then use them, they will not go down to your expertise level. And so what this is going to mean is, frankly... If you can craft your own gear, you just got a huge advantage. Or I shouldn't say a huge advantage, but you can essentially bypass the watermark system. So your options are going to be watermark or expertise your gear up, or you're going to have to level up your armor smithing and your weapon smithing and your jewel crafting yourself because you need to craft your own in order to get around this. Now, the best part of what we just read, frankly, in my opinion, was the fact that there are going to be things that are exempt from this whole nerfing aspect. Basically, everything in the game that you already have on your character before they introduce this in 2022 is going to get exempt from being expertise nerfed, um, which basically means... Everything that's currently in the game isn't going to get touched by this effect. This is only going to affect things after the patch. Um, so basically, everything that you have going on right now for your character, everything you've worked hard for, everything that you've got from the trading post and from XYZ sources is going to be fine. It's essentially going to be grandfathered in and not have. you don't have to worry about it getting nerfed. So that's going to be the biggest and best change coming from this whole post, I guarantee you. Um essentially you are not going to get nerfed in power this is only going to affect you affect you as you progress after the patch in 2022 okay um and 
I just want to say, bottom of my heart, thank you, Amazon devs. I think that is really, really a right step in the good, like a good step in the right direction. Uh, and it's and it's really nice to be able to say that. Like, like normally in all these posts, it's been feeling like we're taking one step forward, three steps back. And I'm gonna be honest, I don't think we're taking any steps back with with the the changes that are coming from this particular post. I'm just going to throw that out there right now. These are all fantastic changes. Thank you. Um, all right. We acknowledge this change will create a difference between the way the game worked before this change and after. There's some weird English here. We recognize that some players who haven't hit 60 yet and acquired their gear may feel like the game got harder for them. I mean... It, they will. It, it's just a true statement that it's going to be much harder to level yourself up uh, as a new player compared to what the older players were able to do with the trading post. That's just a fact that you're implementing. Hopefully this is offset with the addition of gypsum as a new avenue that previous players didn't have. We're going to get more into gypsum uh, a little later on here. In addition, when we implement the gear score scaling, we will now only reduce the effectiveness to the middle of your expertise and items gear score. So if your musket expertise is 520 and you buy a 600 gear score musket off the market, your effective gear score will be 560. This combined with the getting to use oh wait this combined with the getting to use all perks should create good value in the marketplace for future users. Once again, another fantastic update and change to it. Um, essentially what they're saying is take your expertise, take your gear score on your item, meet in the middle. That's your effective gear score for that weapon. Um, it basically means that you still have an incentive as a fresh uh, level 60 player or um, low expertise in certain as in certain you know spots like amulets or rings kind of thing player you still have the every incentive to buy that higher tiered uh, trading post item because it's still gonna give you a nice little bump it's gonna give you half the bump that it used to but it's still gonna give you a bump all right December tuning and balance adjustments. Also, based on the PTR feedback from playing with the expertise in Gypsum system, we are going to make a number of tuning and balance adjustments to the system. Please keep in mind that these have not been tested, so consider them directional examples of the changes we are planning for December. Basically, guys, what we're about to read is not set in stone, uh, but it's the direction they're planning on trying to go in. All right. Reduce the cost of, cra of crafting Gypsum Orb to 2.5 coin from a hundred and the gypsum cast to five coin from 475 we decided there was no need to add another coin expense for our level 60 players but kept a minimal amount so end game territory owners can earn a little more tax income um so basically the way it was in the ptr originally it was going to essentially cost you 600 gold to make one cast to do one uh, expertise upgrade bump. Now, it is not going to cost you 600 gold. It's going to cost you like seven and a half gold, which is completely nothing. That is literally nothing in this game. Um, essentially, you don't have to go poor grinding your expertise up. Uh, this was probably the second most complained about thing from the end game update <laughs> that that we were that we were showed and uh again this is just an example of them listening and and they're like you know what you're right we don't want to screw you guys we don't want you guys to have to pay 600 gold every time you want to expertise upgrade bump so uh yeah we got rid of it thank you that like great change this is fantastic this is healthy for the game Change Topaz Gypsum to daily instead of weekly and reduce crafting ingredients to make it less difficult to craft. So I'm assuming what they're saying here is the Topaz Gypsum is the, um, is the potion that you make at a tier 5 camp. Uh, and the way it originally was is you can make the potion once a week. And it would last for 60, uh, for 60 minutes, for one hour. 
Um, it sounds like that they're going to instead change it to a daily craft so that you can actually get Topaz Gypsum daily, uh, which is going to be the same as all the other sources of Gypsum. Uh, I don't know why originally they wanted to make it a weekly thing that only lasted for, for one hour, but uh, it, it sounds like they're gaining their senses back a little bit, and they're like, wait, Everything else is daily. Let's make this daily. Um, so the good news is uh, people were going to be able to craft um, these potions every day. And you're going to be able to go farm mobs every day. These are the ones where you craft the potion at a tier 5 camp. That's going to, And the potion itself is going to use um, you know all those creatures that are on the logs. The purple creatures like the life moths and blight moths and tur uh, turtle things. And all those like that are on the little logs. Um... Those are the ingredients that go into these potions, um, and since we're going to be crafting them once a day, the the weekly potion was costing five of like every single one of those creatures that were on logs, um, and I'm assuming if we're going to make it daily instead of weekly, uh, that means that we're going to be crafting you know six more of these potions a week than previous. I would assume it's probably going to only cost one of each of those resources, which is still going to be using more total resources um, over the course of a week. But uh, just as a heads up for you guys that aren't aware, um, you know, when you see creatures on logs, go go get them. Um, they are going to be what's needed to do cho Topaz Gypsum. Uh, and basically what you do is you drink the potion and then you have the buff on you for uh, 60 minutes. And there, yeah, for one hour. And then you go around and you kill a bunch of ads that are level 55 plus, uh, which means any, any creature that's level 55 or higher, um, while the potion has been drank, has the chance to drop Topaz Gypsum for you. Um, so basically what you're going to want to do is go to a location that has a lot of creatures um, that are in the higher level zones. And I, I don't believe they have to be elite. I'm not sure if elite or, you know, champion style creatures drop have a higher drop chance. I, I haven't tested any of that stuff. Um, so if people do know a little bit more, uh, like kind of the best farm spots, I'd love to hear that in the comments. Um but uh, odds are it's going to be go somewhere that doesn't have elites, doesn't have champions, but does have high respawn rates uh, or like quick respawn rates with uh, loads of mobs. I'm thinking maybe like the forts and shattered mountain stuff like that. Um, all right. Change gypsum earn cooldown timers from 22 hours to 18 hours just to give a little more leeway to people's play schedules. In the future, we want to build a global cooldown system to make it easy to coordinate this and other daily activities like crafting and faction missions. But that is a lower priority than server mergers and other critical fixes. So this will not happen in the short or medium term, short to medium term. Um First off, let's hit the first part here. They changed it from 22 hours to 18 hours. Beautiful change. Thank you. Uh, that basically gives it so that, like, let's say one day I wanted to do it at, you know, uh, 8 o'clock at night. But the next day, I'd like to do it at 3 o'clock because it's the weekend, right? And and I, I'd like to do it, like, earlier in the day to get my stuff done because it works better with my schedule. Well, now I'm going to be able to do that. Um, it just gives more leeway, and it's appreciated. Thank you. Um and then let's hit the global cooldown system. This is something that a lot of people have been asking for, frankly, that uh, I think is going to be very beneficial to the game. And basically, this is just them telling us, look, we hear you. It's on our radar. We'd like to do it, too. But we have other priorities, uh, like <laughs> like mergers. Um, so, <laughs> so that's something that we can look forward to in the future. Uh, and I think that's going to be a great change, especially with all this daily stuff getting entered into the game. Adjust the way expertise bumps work so there is a minimum as well as a maximum. Currently, there is no minimum, which can result in a few bad rolls at the start really demoralizing players. This will also decrease the average bumps needed to get from minimum to maximum expertise. Our goal is to average around 35 drops. All right, so there's kind of a little bit to unpack here. Let's let's hit the top part first, and then we'll hit the big juicy bottom part. Um, so uh, when it says minimum and maximum, um, when you get an expertise bump, that means that you have an expertise score of something, and then it's now getting increased to some other number. So let's say, for example, that my spear is at 530, and I get an expertise bump. Um, 
the way that it was currently working in the PTR was there's a maximum uh, bump that you could possibly get, like five. Um, so the best I could have gotten would be for, to go from 530 to 535. Um, but there was no minimum at different levels. So what that meant is I could go from 530 to 531. And that would feel absolutely god awful. And the next day, I could go from 531 to 532, and it's like, what's the point of this? You know. Um, so, putting a minimum on there is going to be fantastic. It's going to make it feel less bad early on. Um, I I believe their system is something like you know from like 500 to 530 ish or something. You can get like plus five, and then from like 530 to five, you know. 50 or something you can get plus four and then to 570 you can get plus three and then to five like 90 you can get plus two or and then from 590 to 600 it's only plus ones it, it's something like that it's something similar to that um so let's go ahead and dive into the bottom part now the bottom part is saying that their goal is to make a system where on average people need 35 expertise bumps to go from minimum to maximum you, your minimum is 500, and then your maximum is 600. So to go from, let's say, Spear 500 to Spear 600, you need to do 35 different expertise increases on Spear. Let's just talk about that in terms of what you're able to do daily with Gypsum, okay? So with Gypsum, if you did every single Gypsum uh, every single day, you would be able to do seven bumps of something um you'd be able to do seven bumps of something every single day and i i i'm gonna be honest i actually am forgetting so somebody please let me know in the comments um i don't remember if you can make i don't i think you can make all the casks or but you can't turn them all into the same watermarked item and what i mean by that is let's say i do my topaz uh, and then I do my OPR one and I do my expedition one and I have three uh, caches that I can now create um, from three different to gypsum sources. I don't believe that I can make all three of them a spear uh, expertise upgrade. I think I can only do one of them as a spear expertise upgrade and the other two have to be something that isn't spear. Um, so keep in mind that when we talk about being able to do a maximum of seven a day, those are going to be seven different slots that we're talking about. Um, or what you could be doing is saving some of those up to use the next day if you don't think you're going to farm more the next day sort of thing. Um, I'm not 100% sure if I'm wrong on that. Somebody please let me know in the comments. But I believe that's how it's currently working. Um, so... It's going to take 35 days minimum to go from a minimum gear score to a maximum gear score if you farm gypsum every single day for those 35 days and put them one roll each into a certain slot. Um, so what we're talking about is over a month of daily grinding um, to get one of your... Oh, how many weapons are in this game? 11, 12? So there's like 11 or 12 weapons. There's uh, five armor slots. There's two uh, or there's three um so there's basically around 20 things that need to get upgraded five armor three uh accessories plus like 11 or 12 weapons so around 20 things that need to get upgraded um to put that in perspective for you guys that is a lot a lot a lot a lot of days of grinding to go from zero or to go from 500 to 600 on every slot now um is this the only way to get expertise up no you can do um arenas you can do your expedition boss fights those are still going to be guaranteed drops as well um but just keep in mind every other aspect got heavily nerfed like heavily nerfed so you know, doing your chest farms, doing your elite grinds, killing named bosses in elite zones like Sirens and Merc Guard, that got heavily nerfed. That's going to get heavily nerfed. Um, you're not going to see very many watermark increases from there. So the system that's going to get implemented is 
you're going to get guaranteed on gypsum. You're going to get guaranteed on, on expeditions and you're going to get guaranteed on arenas. Everything else. You're like, don't bet on it. Um, which means it's going to take you 35 days minimum to get one thing from 500 to 600. Um, on top of that, I mean, the good news is you can theoretically be doing seven different slots at the same time, um, as well as, you know, most of the people that are in the end game content currently, we're not at 500, right? We're somewhere between 500 and 600 on most of our gear, uh, which means that we're not starting at the bottom, right? So it's not going to take most of us the full 35 drops per, per slot. Um, so just keep that in the back of your guys' minds. Um, 35 on average means you need to grind this stuff daily for over a month. Um, and, and it's going to take a while, frankly, that's the system they want to put in place. Um, I, I feel like 30 personally, just, I'm just saying myself, I feel like 35 is a lot. I, I think, you know, 25 maybe might feel a little bit better and still feel pretty grindy. Um, but maybe that's just me. I don't know. Um, let me know what you guys think about this particular number. I, I'm, I am curious. What, what's the general community thoughts on 35 bumps to go from 500 to 600? Uh, I think it's a little big personally, but again, just overall in terms of the system that they're implementing, um, all of these changes I think are, are fantastic. And I, I thoroughly do. And I, I like the gypsum system. I do. I like the fact that we can choose what we want to get upgraded. Um, I just think that they're setting it so that our upgrades are not as big as I would like them to be, if that makes sense. Move gypsum rewards from cash to event. A few activities such as Outpost Rutch, Corrupted Breaches, Arenas, and Aptitude granted gypsum in the cash in the PTR. This leads to hoarding and uncertainty if using a cash now is safe. This change should resolve both of those concerns. Uh, basically... People were hoarding the caches that you get that show up in the top left of your inventory screen um, because they were concerned that if they opened it, that it would screw uh, them getting gypsum and maybe they needed to save it for the next day so that they could get the gypsum for the next day from the cache that they got the previous day. That's going out the window uh, because they want you to do the activities daily. Um, so instead, the gypsum that gets rewarded from these events is just going to go straight, I guess, to your inventory the moment that they're completed. Uh, I Honestly, good change. I actually think that's very smart. Thanks again for your feedback. One of the benefits of sharing our plans prior to final implementation is hearing your sentiment and then adjusting or designs accordingly. I'm going to assume that's supposed to be uh, our. And then adjusting our designs accordingly, Zen. Guys, I just read a forum post by the Amazon devs that was frankly nothing but good news. Like this, everything that I just read was take, we don't even have to look at the actual changes happening. Let's just look at the broad picture here. All right. A bunch of people complained about all the crap that they were trying to pull on us. And they were like, wait, let's listen to our community. They, they literally had a meeting where they said, let's listen to our community and let's make good changes. And now they're telling us, hey, we're actually going to listen to you guys and make good changes. Compare that to what they did to Into the Void. Com just compare that. They put out a PTR for a week, did zero changes, made a million stealth changes, and didn't tell us jack, and 90% of it was garbage for the community. Like, this is a very good step in the right direction. Just, just from a... Uh, just from a helping your community standpoint and just being right with your community. Um, so I'm very excited. I'm very happy in that direction. I hope you guys continue to go in that direction. Um, and uh, I think the changes themselves are all good. I think literally everything you just described was good and healthy for the player base. So thank you. Just, just bottom of my heart. Thank you guys. Um, yeah. I, I, you know what? Here's, here's how we're going to sum up the, uh, the, the YouTube video here, boys. This forum post was good different. Congratulations, Amazon. See ya.